So when selecting games to review for the channel, I tend to steer clear of anime tie-in games unless I've already seen the anime. I find evaluating certain aspects of these games really difficult without some cursory understanding of the source material. And being as playing the game itself, as well as writing the script and producing the video is enough work already, I am not necessarily in a hurry to add binge watch 24 episode anime to my to-do list. Now, that being said, a few summers ago I do remember watching the original Little Witch Academia short film on Netflix. And while it wasn't like a life-changing viewing or anything, it was still very enjoyable. So when I stumbled across the Little Witch Academia, The Chamber of Time, I had this existing positive impression of the franchise and felt much more inclined to make a video on it. Now, it's been a few years since I've seen the short film, and I still have yet to see any of the anime. And uh, being as people on the internet can be less than forgiving when it comes to failing to nail the details, I don't feel like it's unreasonable for me to stream just the first few episodes of the anime. You know, make sure it's all fresh in my mind and I'm reacquainted with the characters. And finished. Alright, we got through it. It's good. Dayako for life. And this is why I don't review anime tie-in games on a regular basis. God. Our story begins with, uh, well, it doesn't, really. The game starts out under the assumption you've already watched the Little Witch Academia anime and are familiar with the premise. Assuming that's not you, our story revolves around Akko, a young witch in training attending her first year at Luna Nova Magic Academy, Europe's <laughs> foremost witchcraft institution. Akko is special in that she is not at all special. She was not born into a magical family and therefore has zero experience with magic, how to use it, and the accompanying culture. In short, Akko is out of place and terrible at everything. The story picks up two days before summer vacation when- Holy shit! What am I looking at? The, the lip syncing. There isn't any. The characters just kind of start flapping their mouths and let the dialogue do its own thing. And why are the animations so choppy? You know how in old Mass Effect games when you jam the X button to skip character conversations and the uh, animations would kind of jump to catch up with where you were in the conversation? It's like that, but all the time. Story, right, uh, okay. It's nearly time for summer break, and Akko and her friends are attending the pre-vacation assembly. The headmaster gives us some lovely parting words, well wishes, and assorted unnecessary statements people who love to hear themselves talk enjoy imparting on a captive audience. When I got bored, spaced out, and had to review the footage to catch on what happened because goddamn this opening drags on! Skimming the details, Akko gets in trouble for some nonsense she did off screen, and as punishment, is made to organize and shelve all the miscellaneous books strewn about the library. The next morning, Akko, the ever-diligent, puts away whole three books before awarding herself with a small break in the form of napping for the better part of the afternoon. During her <coughs> demure visit to Sleepy Town, a strange figure delivers Akko a mysterious magical text. Later, when her friends come to bail her out of the deep shit she put herself in by neglecting her punishment, placing said text in its proper location on the bookshelf reveals a hidden door, leading them to a secret room within the library. Akko, of course, goes mucking around in said magic room and winds up trapping her and her friends in an infinite time loop. Uh, and, and here's another reason why this opening really seems to outstay its welcome. While I understand it's an introduction to an important part of the game's world, we have to repeat the same day three times before we really get to start playing. The same path from our room to the library and the same conversations along the way. Except with the obligatory... What? Didn't I tell you this yesterday? Nonsense thrown in. Again, I appreciate that this kind of story framing helps put us in the same headspace as our protagonist. It's just a shame that that headspace is inside of a goddamn oven. Anyway, Akko's friends end up following her into the magic room and unwittingly trap themselves in the time loop with her. Diana, Akko's rival, <laughs> rival, and by far the most competent member of the group, suggests that maybe they should consider telling a teacher that they may or may not have broken the space-time continuum, but Akko somehow talks her out of it. 
apparently Akko thinks the universe revolves around her and is totally fine with stranding in a state of perpetual stasis while she, a magically uneducated, entitled little shit, wastes the equivalent of 10 years trial and erroring this bitch all to avoid a week or two of detention. Wow, what a likable protagonist. The Chamber of Time's gameplay, like most JRPG-ish games set in high school, is divided into two sections, dungeon crawling in a vaguely understood magical reality, and faffing about the school undertaking various side quests. The quests are largely simple fetch quests, like gathering old magical artifacts, or helping snacky girl here experience exotic flavored snacks she has yet to taste. You know, I'm not one to judge, but if she keeps gorging herself on empty calories like that, she's gonna account for Japan's 3% obesity rate all by herself. Being as our party is trapped for living the same day in an infinite loop, you may think there'd be no sense of urgency. Cue the Groundhog's Day clock in the upper left hand corner of the screen. That clock is the defining element of both the story and the gameplay. Each day begins at 7am and ends at midnight resetting back to 7. Each side event, or side quest, has a set period of time in which it can be undertaken and completed. This means that when you're doing a little questing, you usually want to take a little time to plan out how you want to spend a given day to make the most of it. Because if you miss that quest window, ho ho ho, you gotta kill some time or rest till that time the next, uh, uh next day. The quests often make fantastic use of the central story conflict, requiring you to leverage the looping day in order to complete them. For example, there's this quest where these three best friends are fighting over a missing book. You don't even begin that quest until they've already got mad at one another, but the next day, armed with that information, you can give them a replacement textbook and stop the fight from ever happening. Until the day resets and you have to do it all over again. And therein lies the downside. When you complete a side quest, even though it's marked as complete in your quest log, the girls you helped are back with the same problems at the start of the next day. While the side quests given by your party members are only available once, keeping track of which other side quests you have and have not seen through to completion just by looking at your map is legitimately impossible. As you progress through the game, Akko gains access to various magical medicines. These spells grant you access to various locked off areas throughout the school and allow you to complete some side quests. But aside from the sleeping spell, they all seem to mainly serve as kind of filler steps to progress in the story. The hidden room in the library houses the game's many dungeons as well as is the focal point of the gameplay, which can best be summarized as a side-scrolling, beat-em-up, dungeon-crawler, action RPG... thing. With a party of three, you enter a dungeon using a one of a variety of different keys and systematically beat the living shit out of every goblin, spirit, and skeleton on your way to the boss room. Doing so yields the expected copious amounts of loot dungeon crawlers are known for, experience to level up your party, skill points to individually boost your stats, as well as upgrade and unlock different spells. As for the actual ass kicking itself, there is a lot of fun to be had here. Each character has three basic attacks, a quick light attack that can rack up a lot of hits in a nice little combo, a medium attack that hits just once but for superior damage, and a ranged attack. There's an abundance of spells and spell types that can be equipped, each girl having their own loadout of six. These spells range from things like basic healing magic to wonderfully animated screen clearing attacks. Each member of the party handles just a little bit differently and they all have access to different character specific spells so there are reasons to try them all out until you settle on a party you like. I do, however, recommend Constance, largely because she is mute and let me tell you, silence is golden. <laughs> Controls can feel a little clunky at times. This is primarily because there's this window between when you stop sprinting and actually stop moving where you can't perform any actions. It is really frustrating to be running, release the run button to jump, only to watch my character coast to a graceful halt before finally deciding to leave the ground, often too late. This specific interaction can be avoided by holding the run button through your jump, but not only is this counterintuitive, the inability to cancel actions at all is pretty frustrating. The dungeons themselves are fun to clear, and grinding for EXP and loot certainly rewards you with a noticeable increase in strength. My only gripe about the combat is that in the early game, it's not particularly challenging. 
Some of the mini boss encounters are questionably designed at best with ripe opportunities for cheesing. I mean, look at this! I am clearly underleveled here, but the way this lumbering idiot is designed, I'm never in any danger of taking a hit. I haven't experienced this level of cheese since attending the Vermont annual Dark Souls speedrun charity stream sponsored by Chuck E. Cheese. The great state of Vermont will not apologize for its cheese. As far as the stage design is concerned, I'd be totally fine with just your standard keep walking left till everything's dead set up as long as the combat's fun and the background's pretty. But they had to try and spice it up, didn't they? The first dungeon starts out strong. Lots of traps, branching paths, and dead ends hiding loot. Just what I want from a dungeon crawler. However, the very next level is literally just a grid of the exact same background where you trial and error your way through an invisible predetermined path to the boss room. What the hell happened? Did they just assume no one would play to level 2? Or the goddamn minecart level? You wanna see some riveting gameplay? Slip on a pair of depends because you're about to shit yourself! Whoa! Gameplay! Wow! When your level layout can be accurately recreated by a blank sheet of graph paper or a four year old with a spirograph, there is the outside possibility that you suck at your job. Earlier in the review, I grilled Chamber of Time for not having smooth transitions between animations during dialogue. While that was my initial impression, after a number of hours with the game, I got the feeling it was more of a style choice rather than unabashed laziness. The game really gives the feeling of an old PS2 era beat em up like Odin Sphere. We are at the point where graphical fidelity is too damn high, and the ability to count individual hairs on a character's head does not particularly interest me. So seeing a game brave enough to take a firm stance and distinct visual style is something I'm not unhappy to see. All that being said, I would imagine that the trade-off for this graphical downshift would be the ability to hold a steady frame rate. But for some reason, Chamber of Time is perfectly content dropping frames like it's got them to spare. And trust me, it does not. Many of these areas are not even particularly busy, and yet the screen stutters worse than Professor Quirrell stumbling across Quirldemort fanfiction on Tumblr. Additionally, I noticed there was an issue with the screen borders. You can't see it now, but on my TV everything looks something like this. While it certainly isn't anything more than a minor annoyance, obstructing only minimal information in the menus, the fact that there's no option to adjust screen borders on a PS4 game is confusing. The art direction and cell shading of Chamber of Time are executed beautifully. It is abundantly clear that Studio Trigger, the producers of the Little Witch Academia anime, as well as other wonderfully stylish shows such as Kill a Kill, played a role in the game's production. The attention to detail in terms of character animations, Aqua in particular, I'm, they're absolutely brimming with charm. Everything from her little eavesdropping head bob and her shady skulk to her neutral walk cycle are exaggerated to the max and positively cartoony. The music is lovely, just beautiful. The superb animation of Little Witch Academia anime is indicative of a nice fat budget, so I can only guess that it would be reflected in the score as well. Chamber of Time is completely voice acted, and I do mean completely. Everything from the cutscenes to the random flavor dialogue with faceless NPCs, all voice acted by the cast of the anime. When wandering around Luna Nova, this really makes the school feel alive. In combat, however, every time you perform a given action or attack, your character spouts the exact same line of dialogue. Every. Single. Time. <laughs> Hot stuff coming your way! Hot stuff coming your way! Chamber of Time, all things considered, is a perfectly serviceable beat em up dungeon crawler experience. Is it perfect? Hardly. The aforementioned boring and tedious levels water down the interesting ones, and keeping track of your side quests is a literal, actual work. Good enough to play? Absolutely. But good enough is uh, hardly a glowing recommendation. 
If you're a Little Witch Academia fan, I can with full confidence recommend you pick this game up right when it hits the states. You're gonna have a great time, it's got a lot to offer for fans of the series. But for everyone else, I've got a feeling it's gonna come up just a little bit short. We'll see. As always guys, thank you for watching. I want to take just a moment to thank my loyal Patreon supporters, Sean Van Pelt, Tyler Rosardo, and, are you ready for it, Ben? Benjamin Montemurro. Mont Montemurro. Montemurro. Okay, and, um, <laughs> thank you so much for your support, and of course, all my other Patreon supporters. What you guys do for me is, uh, I've said it before, and it I just can't convey it enough. Thank you so much. You're really helping me make this my career. And so if you would like to support the channel, uh, I encourage you to please check out uh, the link to my Patreon page. There are a couple uh, tiers in there, but if you can support me even just $1 a month, you're helping me out so much so that I don't need your ad revenue from watching this video. I will send you a link personally. I will send you a link to Adblock for you to download and use with my blessing. That is what that means to me. So if you're interested, great, have a look. If not, don't even worry about it. Just keep coming back. I appreciate you. Feel free to subscribe and hit that little bell icon if you want to know when a new review comes out. I mean, it's like, I'm not going to spam you, I swear to God. It's like once a month at the most, once every three months at the worst. God. So uh, yeah, if you want to know right when they come out, hit the bell, subscribe, appreciate it keep pumping out content for you guys. Other than that, feel free to check out uh, some of my older reviews, like my Dragon Quest 11 review or Persona 5, or there's a link to the whole Rainfall review playlist down here. Go ahead and give it a look. Feel free to follow me on Twitch. We're going to be back with uh, hitting Twitch super hard. Streaming schedule, like I'm redoing everything. It's going to be super fun, really professional, and uh, actually have, be consistent this time thanks to my big, beefy new computer. Oh, yeah. All right. So uh, other than that, I don't know, just big thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate you coming back. And in the meantime, I guess we're done here.